It was the last day of school, and anticipation hung heavy in the air. For Ben, a quiet and reserved student, it meant the end of another chapter in his life. As he walked through the crowded hallways, he couldn't help but feel a sense of relief mixed with a twinge of sadness. The day started like any other, with the usual buzz of excitement echoing through the corridors. But as Ben made his way to his locker, he noticed something peculiar. A small folded note was wedged between the metal door and the frame. Curiosity peaked, he unfolded it carefully, revealing a cryptic message scrawled in messy handwriting. Beware the final bell. Confused, Ben glanced around, but the bustling crowd paid him no mind. Shrugging off the strange note as a prank, he tossed it into his backpack and headed to his first class. Throughout the day, Ben couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled in the pit of his stomach. The minutes ticked by slowly, each passing hour bringing him closer to the final bell. He tried to focus on his lessons, but his mind kept wandering back to the mysterious message. As the final period approached, Ben's nerves were on edge. He couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to happen, something ominous and foreboding. When the bell finally rang, signaling the end of the school year, he felt a chill run down his spine. With a sense of trepidation, Ben gathered his belongings and joined the throngs of students making their way to the exit. But as he stepped outside, he was greeted by an eerie sight. Thick, ominous clouds had rolled in, casting the school grounds in a dim, shadowy light. Ignoring the unease creeping up his spine, Ben hurried towards the bus stop, eager to leave the unsettling atmosphere behind. But as he approached, he noticed that the buses were nowhere to be seen. Panic began to rise within him as he realized he was stranded, alone in the desolate schoolyard. Turning back towards the school building, Ben's heart sank as he saw that the doors had been locked, trapping him inside. With each passing moment, the sense of dread intensified, suffocating him like a vice. Desperate for answers, Ben retraced his steps, searching for any clue that might explain the strange turn of events. That's when he stumbled upon another note, this one pinned to the notice board near the entrance. It read, You shouldn't have ignored the warning. Now you must face the consequences. Trembling, Ben tore the note from the board, his mind racing with fear and confusion. Who had left these messages, and what did they want from him? With no other options, he resolved to find out, no matter the cost. But as he ventured deeper into the empty halls of the school, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched, that something sinister lurked in the shadows, waiting to strike. And as the last rays of daylight faded into darkness, Ben realized with growing horror that his nightmare was far from over. With each step Ben took, the school seemed to grow darker, the shadows stretching and twisting in unnatural ways. His heart pounded in his chest as he navigated the labyrinthine corridors, the oppressive silence broken only by the sound of his own ragged breaths. Suddenly, a faint whisper echoed through the halls, sending a shiver down Ben's spine. He froze, straining to listen, but the voice was barely audible, like a ghostly whisper carried on the wind. Turn back, it seemed to say, before it's too late. Ignoring the warning, Ben pressed on, driven by a mix of fear and determination. He had to uncover the truth behind the ominous messages, no matter the cost. But as he reached the end of a long hallway, he stumbled upon a chilling sight. Before him stood a figure cloaked in darkness, its features obscured by the shadows. Ben's blood ran cold as he realized that he was not alone in the abandoned school. Who are you? He demanded, his voice trembling with fear. The figure said nothing, but its presence seemed to loom larger, suffocating Ben with its oppressive weight. With a sinking feeling, he realized that he was in grave danger, trapped in a nightmare from which there might be no escape. As panic threatened to consume him, Ben's mind raced, searching for a way out of the terrifying predicament. And then, in a moment of clarity, he remembered the note's warning, beware the final bell. With a surge of adrenaline, Ben realized that the answer had been right in front of him all along. The final bell had tolled, 
marking not only the end of the school year, but also the beginning of a sinister game orchestrated by forces beyond his comprehension. But as he turned to flee, the shadows seemed to coil around him, dragging him deeper into the darkness. And as the echoes of his footsteps faded into the abyss, Ben knew that he was about to face his greatest fear, alone in the heart of the haunted school on the last day of his life. With his heart racing and adrenaline coursing through his veins, Ben's instincts kicked in. He knew he had to find a way out of this nightmare, but the shadowy figure blocking his path seemed to grow more menacing with each passing second. Summoning every ounce of courage he possessed, Ben took a step forward, determined to confront whatever dark force lurked in the depths of the school. I won't let you control me, he declared, his voice echoing through the empty halls. To his surprise, the figure recoiled, its form wavering like smoke in the wind. Emboldened by this small victory, Ben pressed on, his resolve strengthened by the flicker of hope that ignited within him. As he navigated the maze of corridors, Ben's senses were on high alert, every creak of the floorboards and rustle of the curtains setting his nerves on edge. But he refused to give in to fear, clinging to the belief that there was a way out of this nightmare. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Ben reached the main entrance of the school, with trembling hands, he pushed against the heavy doors, praying that they would give way. And to his relief, they did, swinging open to reveal the safety of the outside world. But just as Ben stepped out into the cool night air, he heard a chilling laugh echoing behind him. Whirling around, he saw the shadowy figure looming in the doorway, its eyes glowing with malevolent intent. You cannot escape me, it hissed its voice like ice against Ben's skin. You are mine now, bound to this place for eternity. Refusing to be cowed, Ben stood his ground, his gaze locked with the creatures. I don't belong to you, he declared, his voice unwavering. I am not afraid of you. With a roar of fury, the shadowy figure lunged forward, its form twisting and contorting in a frenzy of rage. But just as it reached out to ensnare him, Ben felt a surge of power welling up from within him, a force he never knew he possessed. In a blinding flash of light, the darkness was banished, evaporating into nothingness like mist in the morning sun. And as Ben watched in awe, he realized that he had triumphed over the forces of evil, emerging victorious from the harrowing ordeal. The sun cast long shadows across the emptying schoolyard as Claire watched her classmates scatter like autumn leaves in the wind. The last day of school had arrived, marking the end of another academic year filled with highs and lows. As she walked towards the school gates, a sense of relief mingled with a tinge of sadness. But amidst the jubilation of impending freedom, an uneasy feeling settled in Claire's stomach. She couldn't quite shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Glancing around, she noticed the usually bustling corridors were eerily quiet. It was as if the school itself held its breath, waiting for something to happen. As Claire made her way to her locker, she noticed a piece of paper pinned to the notice board. The words, meet me at the old oak tree behind the school, 3 o'clock p.m., were scrawled hastily across it. Curiosity peaked. Claire glanced at her watch. It was already 2.45 p.m. Without much thought, she decided to investigate. The old oak tree stood at the edge of the school grounds, its gnarled branches reaching towards the sky like twisted fingers. Claire approached cautiously, her heart pounding in her chest. She scanned the area, but there was no one in sight. Just as she was about to turn back, a voice behind her made her jump. Claire, over here. She spun around to see Sarah, her best friend emerging from the shadows. What are you doing here? Claire asked, relief flooding through her. I got the same note, Sarah replied, holding up a crumpled piece of paper. Together, they waited beneath the oak tree, exchanging nervous glances as the minutes ticked by. The school grounds grew deserted, the distant laughter of their classmates fading into silence. Then, just as the clock struck 3 o'clock p.m., a figure emerged from the shadows. Claire's heart skipped a beat as she recognized Mr. Reynolds, their history teacher. 
but there was something different about him, something unsettling in the way he moved. Hello girls, Mr. Reynolds said, his voice low and gravelly. I'm glad you could make it. Claire exchanged a wary glance with Sarah. What's going on, Mr. Reynolds? But before he could answer, a sudden gust of wind swept through the schoolyard, sending leaves swirling around them. And in that moment, Claire felt a chill run down her spine, as if the very air around them had turned cold. Mr. Reynolds's eyes gleamed in the fading light as he stepped closer to Claire and Sarah. You see, girls, there's something you need to know about this school. Something. Dark. Claire's pulse quickened as she listened to Mr. Reynolds's words. There was a sense of urgency in his voice, a hint of fear that sent shivers down her spine. This school has a history, Mr. Reynolds continued, his gaze drifting towards the looming silhouette of the building behind them, a history of secrets buried deep beneath its walls. Sarah's eyes widened in disbelief. What kind of secrets? Mr. Reynolds hesitated, as if wrestling with his own thoughts. Legend has it that this school was built on an ancient burial ground, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. And every year, on the last day of school, the spirits of the past come back to haunt these halls. Claire's breath caught in her throat. It was absurd, impossible even. And yet there was something about Mr. Reynolds's demeanor that made her believe every word. We have to leave, Sarah said, her voice trembling. But before they could move, a strange sound echoed through the air, like the mournful wail of a ghost. Claire's heart hammered in her chest as she scanned the schoolyard, searching for the source of the noise. And then she saw it, a shadowy figure lurking in the darkness, its form shifting and twisting like smoke. Without a word, Claire and Sarah turned and ran, their footsteps echoing off the empty corridors. But no matter how fast they ran, the feeling of dread lingered like a shadow at their heels. As they reached the school gates, Claire glanced back one last time, half expecting to see the ghostly figure pursuing them. But the schoolyard lay quiet, and still, the old oak tree standing sentinel against the gathering dusk. It was only later, as Claire lay in bed, that she allowed herself to wonder about the truth behind Mr. Reynolds's words. Was it just a story, a figment of his imagination? Or was there something more sinister lurking within the walls of their school? The days that followed the last day of school were filled with whispers and speculation. Claire and Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to Mr. Reynolds's story than met the eye. Determined to uncover the truth, they delved into the school's history, scouring old yearbooks and newspaper clippings for clues. Their search led them to the local library, where they spent hours poring over dusty archives and ancient manuscripts. And slowly, they began to piece together the dark history of their school, a history stained with tragedy and loss. It turned out that the land on which the school was built had once been home to a thriving community until a series of mysterious disappearances plunged the town into darkness. Rumors swirled of curses and malevolent spirits, of restless souls doomed to wander the earth for eternity. As Claire and Sarah delved deeper, they uncovered stories of unexplained phenomena. Strange noises in the night, flickering lights in the abandoned wing of the school, and sightings of shadowy figures lurking in the shadows. But the more they uncovered, the more questions arose. Who were the spirits haunting their school? And what did they want? Part 4. Confronting the Spirits Determined to find answers, Claire and Sarah returned to the school under the cover of darkness. Armed with flashlights and courage, they ventured into the heart of the building, following the trail of clues they had uncovered. As they crept through the silent corridors, the air grew heavy with the weight of the past. Shadows danced along the walls, and the sound of their own footsteps echoed like a drumbeat in the stillness. And then, they found it, a hidden chamber beneath the school, its walls lined with ancient symbols and cryptic markings. In the center of the room stood an altar, adorned with offerings of flowers and candles. As Claire and Sarah approached, a chill wind swept through the chamber, extinguishing the candles and plunging the room into darkness. And then, from the shadows, emerged the ghostly figures of the past, 
the spirits of those who had been wronged, their eyes burning with fury. But instead of fear, Claire felt a sense of determination wash over her. She knew what she had to do. With trembling hands, she reached into her bag and pulled out a small box, a box containing the ashes of the past, the remains of those who had been forgotten.